Mexico's president responded to recent attacks from politicians in the United States saying that Mexico is actually safer than the United States. He may not be wrong. So the idea of how safe Mexico is is back in the news is we've seen Americans cross the border, two were kidnapped, two were killed. And then you saw the response where the cartel literally put the people who attacked them out in the street to be swept up. Politicians in the U.S. responded with the usual response that going to Mexico just isn't safe and that Mexico needs to do more. And there's this idea in the United States, especially among conservatives, that Mexico is some kind of bad actor that's doing absolutely nothing, when the reality is, on an immigration side, Mexico does a lot to keep people out. They reject a lot of visas. They put a lot of people through scrutiny in terms of going to Mexico just because they want to satisfy the U.S. to keep the border as tight as possible and not be contributing to this massive inflow of people. And on the safety side, having spent a lot of time in Mexico and knowing a lot of people who spend time in Mexico, there are plenty of parts of Mexico that are totally safe. And so today I'm gonna to walk through why I believe if you're looking to leave the United States, Mexico is a lower cost, better weather, a friendlier place that you can go and live, potentially reduce your taxes uh, in many cases, and why you really shouldn't be concerned about safety. Because someone pointed out to me recently, I said, if you got robbed in New York, you wouldn't blame New York. You'd like, who's this guy? He robbed me. That's terrible. Look at this. This guy is a problem. If you went to Bogota in Colombia, if you went to Mexico City, if you went to some you know, foreign country and you got robbed, you might tend to blame the foreign country, especially if you had heard from your politician, your State Department, that going to that country was not to be trusted. And so that is somewhat changing. The mayor of Chicago got kicked out of office recently because people are tired of the crime. And yet there's this idea that somehow Mexico has a monopoly on being unsafe. Here's some facts. According to recent shooting death statistics, you'd have a much greater chance of being shot and killed in Baltimore, St. Louis, Chicago, and many other U.S. cities than you would in Guadalajara, Mexico. I was in Guadalajara, Mexico. I was in the area around the lake that's south of Guadalajara recently. And I happen to say, I think Mexico City, for me, uh, is a more interesting city, but a lot of people enjoy living in Guadalajara, Lake Chapala, all that. And I can tell you, there are areas that feel plenty safe. I can also tell you that I have friends who live in St. Louis, just talked to someone yesterday, Chicago, just talked to someone today. They say it's getting worse and worse. Now, I understand what you might say. Well, I don't live in Chicago. I live in the suburbs. I don't live in St. Louis. I live in the suburbs. And the reality is if you were to go and visit or live, whether part-time as a nomad or full-time as an expat in Mexico, you're not going to live in the bad part of Mexico City. You're going to live in Polanco. You're going to live in Roma Norte. You're going to live in an area... Uh, Lomas that is cleaned up, is beautiful, where there's wealthy people, where there's shops, where there's Prada, where you feel that you fit in. The same way you don't go and live in the worst areas of Chicago, you're not going to live in the worst areas of Guadalajara. Here's another statistic. At 28, uh, 28 out of every 100,000 people, Mexico's murder rate was around four times higher than it was in the United States. But that's largely related to specific spots. And so if you know where to stay out, for example, some of the northern areas, some of the worst neighborhoods, you will avoid it the same way you'd say, well, okay, I can avoid uh, it by staying out of the worst parts of Chicago. And yet, one more statistic, Detroit and Chicago are more violent than the average Mexican city. And so the way I want you to look at this is not what are the general statistics, because yes, if you just look at the statistics, Latin America uh, in general, Mexico in particular, these are some of the, the lesser safe countries. If you look at murder rate, for example, it is going to be higher. But then if you start to, to scale that back and say, okay, where is it where these murders are taking place? Because by the way, you're probably not worried about somebody you know, stealing five bucks out of your wallet. That can happen anywhere. You're worried about violent crime. I don't want to be attacked or gunned down or have something terrible happen to me. Well, you're already more likely to have that happen in Detroit or Chicago than the average Mexican city. And if you find an above average Mexican city, a lot of expats have gone to Merida. They've gone to places along certain parts of the coast where it is safer. Mexico's uh, murder rate is down 7%, while in the U.S. Uh, is up about 20%. Now, violent crime in the U.S. 
and general crime in the U.S. is down since the year 2000. It's down in many parts of the world. Uh, but when you look at actual murders, they are actually up. So you've got about a 25% delta, Mexico versus the United States. Again, do you really care about petty theft? Yes, we'd all like to avoid that. There's probably common sense things you can avoid uh, to do that. What we're looking at is, I want to make sure I'm not going somewhere and walking into a parking lot and being thrown in the back of a truck and shot in the head. And the answer is, again, proper going to the right places because that can happen anywhere. You need to use precautions like anywhere. You'll need to choose a good neighborhood like anywhere. But to me, I look at this and say, and I was one of the first to say back in 2015 when Donald Trump was running for president and people who didn't like Donald Trump said, if he wins, I'm going to Canada, right? People always say they're moving to Canada. And I say, why not move to Mexico? It's cheaper, it's better weather, better food. I like Canadians, but I also like Mexicans. I won't say they're nicer people, but they are nice people. And in a sense, there's a lot of cultural similarities with uh, the United States and with Mexico. There's a lot of things that are just like, oh, they have this, we have this, that you wouldn't find even in many places in Europe. And so for folks who want a soft landing, and they can go to places that are English speaking and or you speak or will speak Spanish, Mexico is a good place to go. And a lot of us have been spending a lot of time there and feeling perfectly safe because you've got a beefed up police, police presence. The police certainly do not want uh, their capital city to be under siege. Um, there are places like Merida where it's known that, hey, that's where uh, people put their families to be safe and all right, you know, leave that alone. And so understand that countries are marketing and countries in a sense are competitors. There was a time not that long ago when the US State Department said, we're issuing a travel alert for the entire world. Somehow at a time when crime was going up and murders were at all time highs in places like Chicago or New Orleans or Memphis is another one that's had problems. A lot of US cities have these problems. Somehow don't travel anywhere else. Does that not strike you as just a little bit of overzealousness that they're not issuing a travel warning for their own cities, but they're issuing a travel warning for, don't go to New Zealand, don't go to Dubai, don't go to Singapore. Really, you're issuing a travel warning to go to Singapore? No doubt Mexico is more dangerous on the whole than Singapore. But at the end of the day, you can set yourself up in the right situation if Mexico is your country of choice or some other Latin American country is your country of choice where you could be perfectly safe. Uh, I do think that Central America probably has more problems than Mexico and seeing that there's not really a lifestyle benefit above what you'd get in Mexico or Colombia or Argentina uh, or Uruguay in a country like Nicaragua, for example, uh, I'd probably avoid the Central American countries. I just don't know that the, the juice is worth the squeeze for most people, even though they are uh, some of the more you know, tax friendly countries in the region. Uh, but countries are marketing. And countries like the US put out travel alerts to make you think, oh, don't go to Mexico. And then you actually go to Mexico and you realize that there are plenty of cities that are actually safer. If you'd like us to talk more about the safest cities in Mexico, leave a comment below and we will put that together. But I remember I talked to a guy and he, he put a spin on it and he said, do you think it's safe to go to Texas? He said, what if I stood in Mexico and said, do you think it's safe to go to Texas? Where you see school shootings, mass shootings at nightclubs, people getting shot in grocery store parking lots, pretty easy to think, hey, that place doesn't seem safe either. In fact, exactly that has happened. When shootings happen in the US, you see European countries issue travel alerts, don't go to the US, the same way the US issues against countries like Mexico. So you realize it's all kind of marketing. It's all kind of who has the best way to pit pitch you on, don't go to that other country, it's bad, stay here, keep your tax dollars here. You have sky high inflation in the US, it is tempering. You could have stretched your dollar a lot further in a country like Mexico. You could have potentially saved taxes living at least part-time in a country like Mexico. And so as people are starting to blame Chicago, are starting to blame New York, are starting to blame San Francisco that, hey, our politicians are doing nothing about crime. If you're thinking of moving, it's best to ignore the marketing and figure out how do I solve the problem? Because I'm already solving the problem in my country to avoid the crime. Why can't I do that with the help of somebody overseas? That's exactly what Nomad Capitalist helps people do. We've lived this lifestyle myself for over a dozen years now living in foreign countries. Uh, I did have a problem once in Nicaragua and I did feel a little sketchy once in, in, in South Africa, Johannesburg, and, and a little bit in El Salvador, which I think has gotten better now. Other than that, never really felt unsafe, even walking around places at one in the morning, never really had any other issues outside of those places. And so the benefits of living overseas means you keep more of your own money, you recapture your freedom. Lots of folks went to Mexico to live a more free life the last couple of years. 
And Nomad Capitalist helps people like you who want to put all the puzzle pieces together so you don't have to figure out how to manage your taxes in different countries and where do you move your, your business and where do you have your banking. You probably don't want to bank in Mexico, but you might want to live in Mexico. So how do you figure that out? Nomad Capitalist helps people do that. You can learn more at nomadcapitalist.com. But realize that when the president of Mexico says that his country is safer than the United States, he has a point.